The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Johnson. Good morning and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johnson. Thanks for joining us for the unique stories of life in the South. On today's show, we'll see how Lawrence County Middle School students are growing right alongside their school's garden. We'll also travel to Alabama State Border in Mobile County to visit Middleton Farm, a family dairy that's recently become a popular tourism attraction. And have you ever been confused by those labels at your local gardening center like hybrid, GMO, or heirloom? Sydney Phelps from Bonnie Plants will be here to help make sense of those different varieties at the end of our show. And this week we'll start the show in a North Alabama garden that attracts hummingbirds by the hundreds. And folks, that's something to see. Stay tuned to Simply Southern. We'll be right back. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you with a full range of agriculture supplies and services from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. The blessing of Alabama agriculture is more than three meals a day. It means independence from foreign nations, freedom to pursue other jobs and activities, conservation of natural resources, and preservation of family values. For 93 years, the Alabama Farmers Federation has brought together the men and women whose work fills our plates and fuels the American dream. Today's farming operation is more complex than ever before, with precision agriculture becoming an integral piece to farm management. AccuField provides precision agriculture technologies and site-specific management capabilities in a simplified and interactive format, helping you put all the pieces of the farming puzzle together. For more information, visit us at www.accufield.com. Carl and Jan were camping with their family. Hey, sweetie, do you mind if I get your wallet? I'm going to run down and get some hot dogs for dinner. You know we're going to catch dinner, right? Yes, yes I do. Okay. Jan lost his wallet at the store. There was no ID in it, but the guy who found it found my business card and called me. I liked saving them money, but I loved helping them save their vacation. It was a good call. For service and savings, call Alpha. Tartar sauce, hon? Hummingbirds are a delightful sight. These tiny birds wing it to Central America for winter, but the rest of the year they're always around us. In Northwest Alabama, there are some folks who know the best way to attract hummers, and they're using their know-how to aid in hummingbird studies and research. For Dr. Bob Daly, tracking hummingbirds is a calling. He's had a fascination of birds for much of his life. Then one day he was approached about helping with hummingbird research. I've been banding the, what I call the regular bird since 1980. Okay. In 98, Bob Sargent, who is the, what I call the master bird bander for hummingbirds in the state of Alabama, and probably in the U.S. because he trained everybody. He asked me to train to do hummingbirds because they needed people to do that. And they needed people that were already used to do birds, just to banding birds. And so he trained me in Pinson, Alabama uh, one day. And, we banded about 60 birds. Since that time, he's banded or tagged hundreds of hummers. I would guess around a thousand. I used to do more. I just don't have time to do them as much. What's your record in a day? Uh, 300. 300 hummers? 300 hummers, yeah. They track the birds by first humanely and painlessly trapping them. Then they are tagged with very small bands. Now the problem with hummingbirds, which you may be able to see when I'm banding, is they have to make the bands by hand. Oh, yes. Little bitty things. Little tiny things. I have to wear the magnifying glasses that surgeons wear. Once the birds are trapped and tagged, they are also inspected and their measurements are logged. You met, well, first you got to determine if it's male or female. There's a process for that, things to look for. Then you measure the culmen, which is the, the bill or the beak of the bird. 
You measure the wing cord, which is the length of the, the wing. You measure tail. Uh, we, I weigh the birds, and if they're a certain weight, depending on time of year, I will also take a, a straw and blow the feathers away from the body, and I will be able to observe fat deposits if they're there. And then we use a numerical scale there as to how much fat do we see. Margie Anderton is also involved in the process. For years, she's had dozens of hummingbird feeders on her property, but she says you don't have to have feeders to have lots of hummingbirds. When you plant something that they like to come to, lots of flowers, and then your hummingbird feeders, of course, but if they've got natural food, they'll turn down the hummingbird feeders any time. She recommends if you want to plant flowers instead of putting out feeders, you should look for flowers with red blooms and or flowers with tubes. She says you shouldn't put too much stock in the widely circulated notion that you have to use red food coloring in your feeders. Well, I did a little experiment this year. Uh, somebody gave me a little uh, container of the, of the red food that they sell to put in hummingbird feeders. And I went through four containers of the regular food before they drank all of the color. I think it must have a preservative or something in it, and they know it. They know it, they, they prefer the pure stuff. Margie says if you are putting up a feeder, remember to make the feeding solution with four cups of water and one cup of sugar. She says you have to inspect them regularly for mildew and make sure they stay clean. Experts like Dr. Daly add there's nothing wrong with keeping the feeders up in the winter. When it's time for them to migrate, your feeder won't keep them here. These birds need to increase their weight by at least 50%, if not more, to migrate as far as Yucatan, uh, particularly if they're gonna fly across the Gulf of Mexico. They can beat their wings at around 25 beats a second and can fly from 25 to 60 miles an hour. At that rate, he says they can be from Dolphin Island, Alabama to the Yucatan in about 18 hours. That's part of the reason hummingbird banding research is so important. They followed birds all over North America and Mexico. They also allow children to watch and help. It's just so amazing to see the children. They'll hold that little hummingbird in their hand when he lets them release them, and it's just like, ah, oh, wow. <laughs> you feel the little heartbeat. That's, that's right, you can feel the heartbeat. It's no surprise banders can feel a hummingbird's heart beating. A hummingbird's resting heart rate is about 250 beats per minute. Ours, on the other hand, is less than half that. You can visit rubythroat.org for more information on hummingbird studies in the southeast. Coming up later, we'll visit a Mobile County family that's turned their dairy farm into an educational facility and tourist attraction. But next, we travel to Lawrence County Middle School, where Coach Mark Neesmith teaches students valuable skills in an outdoor classroom. Alabama soybean farmers help fuel the state's economy. Soybeans are used to make clean, renewable biodiesel and are a key ingredient in feed for poultry, catfish, and livestock. Soybeans are used in dozens of products we use every day. But best of all, soybean farmers generate $258 million and more than 4,000 jobs for Alabama's economy, all while helping conserve our natural resources. Explore the power of soy. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. I got a call from Ashley, one of my customers, because... It looks like there's been some sort of explosion. There is soot everywhere, all over this house. And she finds something very strange. <laughs> Someone's been here. Call 911. I'll be right there. I can't hold it. It turns out someone tried to break into her house, and they got stuck in the chimney. Ashley was covered for the damage to the chimney and the cleanup. For service and savings, call Alpha. <laughs> Technology rules the roost for most young people these days. They have smartphones and tablets, 
and that technology follows them into many Alabama classrooms. But one North Alabama school has found great success in taking the opposite approach, leaving the technology inside and bringing the students outside. At East Lawrence Middle School, there's a different way of thinking. Teacher and coach Mark Neesmith is leading the charge. I enjoy it. Uh, the kids enjoy it. Neesmith is the coordinator of the new outdoor classroom, but he'll be the first to tell you it was a team that brought the idea into reality. About two or three years ago, there were some discussions about um, involving students and maybe motivating students to get involved in outdoor activities and outdoor classroom. And in Lawrence County, there's such a emphasis commercially on agriculture, farming. It's a big part of this county. And uh, Mr. Grimes, the superintendent, and Mr. Smith, um, well, actually, Mr. Smith, the principal, actually asked for somebody to possibly uh, take the, create something where the kids could have an outdoor area to work in. So I did. He took charge based on his own agricultural background. I'm familiar quite a bit with it from my growing up at my age when we were when we were the age that the children are in seventh grade now it was common practice for families to have gardens and farms and cattle my father had all of that when I was growing up. So Neesmith, his team of volunteers and students got to work. They constructed the outdoor learning area over the last few years. There's an orchard, a butterfly garden, flower and plant beds, and raised gardens for vegetable growing, along with a remote weather station. He says his students have been great partners. They don't have to sit in, the, in a building all day long, and they're real receptive to getting their hands dirty and getting outside and, and doing things like that. But Neesmith says there have been some challenges at times, trying to make sure the students understand how important agriculture really is to their families and to the state of Alabama. A lot of explanation telling them why, what, what the purpose of it is, and what the outcome uh, would want, to, would you would want the outcome to be. And uh, I've had very little problem or difficulty as far as lack of motivation from students, um, whether it's them being able to get outside or uh, or whatever the, their motivation might be. But I found it to be quite enjoyable um, from their end, and it uh, you have to. Be very patient because understanding that a lot of kids today don't have that background. While they may not understand it all at the beginning of the school year, students who participate in the planting, growing, watering, and fighting insects certainly understand it once their coursework is complete. Because the food prices are going up and uh, we're going to need uh, maybe a garden background, like if you don't have a lot of money and you need to make gardens, like we can make a wheat garden, well not wheat garden, but wheat field and potatoes and stuff like that so we can get through and eat. Me to be able to contribute and be a part of this and have other kids be able to come out here every day and, and learn and, and uh, have have Coach Denise Smith teach them about all kinds of plants and stuff like that and for them to learn, but uh, that's, that's probably my favorite part. As for Coach Denise Smith, he says his favorite part is watching the light come on when students get why farming is so important with hands-on experience. They actually do the, the work themselves. East Lawrence plans to expand use of the classroom soon. They just landed a grant from Lowe's to build a covered pavilion to allow other kinds of classes to use the facility. Recently, math teachers have also used it to teach measurements, and language arts teachers have used the bird habitat when reading poems about blue jays. Coach Neesmith said many Lawrence County Middle School teachers have found innovative ways to use the outdoor classroom to fulfill curriculum requirements. You can view photos of the outdoor classroom on the school's website. When we return, find out what's attracting visitors to a family dairy farm in Mobile County. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The tag funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agriculture Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. There's nothing quite like sitting down to a home-cooked meal with fresh vegetables from the garden. With Bonnie Plants from your local quality co-op store, you can enjoy the freshest vegetables right from your own backyard. And no matter if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, your quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the most out of your plants. 
You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. Alabama soybean farmers help fuel the state's economy. Soybeans are used to make clean, renewable biodiesel and are a key ingredient in feed for poultry, catfish, and livestock. Soybeans are used in dozens of products we use every day. But best of all, soybean farmers generate $258 million and more than 4,000 jobs for Alabama's economy, all while helping conserve our natural resources. Explore the power of soy. Today's farming operation is more complex than ever before, with precision agriculture becoming an integral piece of farm management. AccuField provides precision agriculture technologies and site-specific management capabilities in a simplified and interactive format, helping you put all the pieces of the farming puzzle together. For more information, visit us at www.accufield.com. The Middleton family of Mobile County knows how to run a dairy, as three generations have made a living on the farm. But recently, they decided to let others experience the joy of farm life and open their doors as an agritourism attraction. Kevin Worthington takes us to the Middleton's farm for an utterly educational experience. Milking cows is nothing new for the folks at Middleton Dairy. Located along the Alabama-Mississippi line, three generations of the family have been doing the twice daily chore seven days a week since 1948. But about four months ago, the farm opened its gates to the public for the first time with the purpose of showing them where their food comes from. What pushed us to the point of going ahead with it, we talked to a guy here back, the boys did, at the bank here probably a year and a half ago. They wanted to know, he's a guy from the city, if you milk a bull or a heifer. So that really what pushed us to the point of putting it in where people, we could educate people on actually where their milk come from. It comes from Walmart, but it comes from the farm first. The idea for tours actually came from Robert's daughter-in-law, Kara, who is an elementary school teacher. For 10 years, she tried to persuade him and her husband, Shane, to give it a try. They finally agreed after visiting several other farms that were providing tours. As we've talked it up, he's walked, watched some shows on RFD and just reading some of the things that have come out you know about agritourism and how farms are having to do it to survive then he got on board and once we built it and he saw the stations he's been so supportive the operation is geared for elementary school students but the middletons have hosted preschoolers all the way up to high school ffa students a former ag in the classroom state and national teacher of the year Kara says she carefully considered what activities to include in the tour. When we designed all of it, I just went by the Alabama Course of Study and I tried to see as many objectives as we could cover so that when teachers leave, they could go back to school and mark off of their list. You know, we taught this, we taught this, we taught this. Many teachers have actually been surprised at how hands-on the tour is. In addition to watching a milking demonstration, students can milk a model cow, touch the various parts of a cow's diet, and feed bottle calves. We thought it would be a neat experience because this is not something that our kids, really, even though we're from a rural community, we don't know. You know, they didn't, don't know how to be this process. We had one teacher to tell us that her kids honestly had no idea what sound a cow made when she started telling them that they were coming and then after the kids came and then got back, she said that her kids, it was like a light bulb went off. Like, oh, so you mean that the cow that moves is where the milk comes from. I mean, the kids just truly did not, all of that, you know, they didn't make that connection. The Middletons say the current state of the dairy industry is requiring them to make changes to their farm. But they hope those changes will expand the educational opportunities for students. The demands on the farm are getting, I mean, everybody knows, harder and harder. And just in the last three years, two dairies have sold out that were right here with us. And their milk was hauled on the same truck our milk is hauled on. And um, the milk truck is just not wanting to come all the way here just for us. 
So we're hoping we can use this to get to the point that we could build a processing facility on the other side so that we could truly milk the cow, show them how the milk is tested, show them you know, the different processes until it's bottled and sell it out the front door. Kara says agriculture is a vital part of everyone's life. So it's important that children learn about it. And there's no better teacher than a hands-on experience. I can show them a cow in a book, I can show them a cow on a video, but until they see it and feel it and smell it, it is not the same. For Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. Middleton Farms hosts birthday parties, special events, school field trips, and farm tours. To find out more, visit middletonfarmtours.webs.com or like Middleton Farms on Facebook. Stay with us, Sidney Phelps with Bonnie Plants will be here next with his expert gardening advice. This seems unbelievable, but I promise it's true. What's with the buzzer? Oh, that's a raven. That's a good omen. He knows we're coming back with dinner. Well, that bird had a bunch of friends. And when Scott got back to the camper... Well, that was a buzzer! What? Scott! Wait, what did you do? That's it's raining it. inside. His new camper was a total loss, but his alpha policy covered it. It's that bird! For service and savings, call Alpha. Making sure you're covered? Good call. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your quality co-op store. There's one near you. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. Today, we're gonna talk about the difference between seed types. You're aware of open pollinated seeds, heirlooms, and even hybrids. So today, I've got Freeman Agnew. He's the head plug grower here at Union Springs. And uh, Freeman, thanks for, for joining us today. You're welcome, glad yeah, to be here. Appreciate it. One thing I wanna talk about, hybrid seeds. There's a lot of misconceptions with hybrids, and that's one thing you know I wanted to have you on the show with us today to, to help clear up some of those misconceptions. All right. Um, a hybrid seed is a controlled pollinated seed. That means it's, it has two parents um, and they control exactly the, how the parents pollinate each other with, to produce, produce a specific type of seed. That way you know you're getting the same consistent product throughout the seed, entire seed production process. Now when you're talking about two parents, you're, you're talking about different characteristics of a particular tomato variety? or Correct. Um, basically they take the two F1s, the two parents, um, parent one may have specific qualities they like the height, the way the leaf looks and fruit size and parent B may have qualities like fruit taste and uh, resi disease resistance and they take them and they cross pollinate them they're able to get the right genetics to produce uh, the seed that you want. So basically what we're looking at with that with a hybrid seed let's let's think of a variety here you know you when you're looking at your choices, uh, when you're looking at bonnieplants.com at the tomato chooser, you want a slicing tomato that's a determinant. These are all characteristics of a hybrid because they're going to be disease resistant as well as having those particular traits that you're looking for. Correct. Okay. Well, let's talk about open pollinated. Open pollinated seeds are seeds that are pollinated by insects, by wind, by whatever means that it takes to get the pollen, pollen from one plant to another. There is no real control over it, so when you get an open pollinated variety, you don't exactly know what you're getting, you get a pretty good idea. Um, and so a lot of the seed companies have to do testing to find different off types to make sure they're sending out a bulk of what you're ordering. Okay. So sometimes you, if you buy an open pollinated plant, you may get some different variations in it. Okay, so pollination with an open pollinated 
you have a ton of different variances that can go into that, so you're not always going to get possibly the same way as the characteristics of a hybrid. But then you have open pollinated and you have the heirloom. So is that the same thing or? No, heirlooms are different. Most heirlooms are at least 50 to 60 years old, okay. depending on, uh, there is no real good definition for an heirloom. Um, some heirlooms have been around for hundreds of years and they are able to produce those through open pollination. Some heirlooms have been around for the last 60 years and they are just a variety that was started 60 or 70 years ago that people really enjoyed and they keep coming back for more. Um, and another thing, a lot of seed companies are starting to move to a hybrid heirloom which um, is where they use, uh, take the characteristics from an heirloom, but breed it through hybrid breeding um, to get a consistent product. Okay, so just because it's a hybrid, it can still be an heirloom. They're, they're moving to that stage now, so you'll have the characteristics that are, that are disease resistant, but that classic heirloom salad or heirloom tomato that you're looking for that has that flavor. Uh, these days, a lot of folks are into saving seeds. Uh, you know, is that something still possible with a hybrid or? or? Uh, you can really do save seeds with your open pollinated and your heirloom, um, but you can't save it from your hybrid because they will revert back to their parent types. Okay, so with that, it's going to go back. You never know what you're going to get with that. Correct. All right. Well, guys, I hope that you've learned something. I know I have today, especially with this. Uh, you can find out more at bonnieplants.com about the varieties, whether they're a hybrid, whether they're an heirloom, and you can get that right tomato or pepper that's perfect for you. So hopefully uh, come back next week and we'll check out something new. And thanks to Sydney Phelps for sharing that great information. Now I know a little bit more about what all those labels mean at gardening centers. Well, you know, Bonnie grows a lot of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You look on the label, next to the variety name will be a bunch of letters. The more letters, the better chance you have of keeping that plant alive. Okay, then I definitely need to make sure I'm looking for a lot of letters. Excellent. That may be the only way I'll get tomatoes. If you'd like more gardening advice, visit bonnieplants.com. For more information about all the stories featured on today's show, be sure to visit the websites for each location. Go to rubythroat.org for more information about hummingbird research in the southeast. Visit the Lawrence County Middle School's website for photos of the outdoor classroom and book a trip to Middleton Farms at middletonfarmtours.webs.com. Plus, bonnieplants.com has gardening tips for gardeners of all skill levels, whether you're a novice like me or an expert like Jim. Find more details about today's featured stories on the Simply Southern Facebook page and be sure to like Simply Southern for updates on future episodes. Mary, after visiting a traditional dairy this week, join us next week for a trip to a goat dairy in North Alabama. And we will visit historic Sloss Furnaces in Birmingham to see how the community has given that old factory new life. Thanks for watching this week's Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johnson. We hope to see you again next Sunday. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.